Hello and welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the brand new trucks coming in season 12, the FE MM37-AT. And whether or not the name actually suits the truck itself, uh, I'll leave that entirely up to y'all to decide. Also, some of y'all might be wondering where my opinions on the other vehicle in the Season 12 DLC are. And my opinions on the other vehicle are, I'm not interested. And I'm not even joking on that. Like, I literally looked at the other vehicle and I was like, eh, I'm not really interested in this. It didn't really seem like it had any features that were particularly... Um, particularly interesting from a performance standpoint or even from like a driving standpoint. Whereas this thing definitely felt like it had a lot more, I don't know, it had a lot more character for sure. Um, and it also had some specific add-ons that are new to this truck. Like for example, the ultra long four unit flatbed not necessarily flatbed because a flatbed is technically a different thing. However, the four unit sideboard bed is unique to this truck, although it does have a little bit of an awkward gap between the like where the bed ends and where the cab starts. And you would almost think to yourself, oh, I could put a crane there. However, the unfortunate reality of that is you can't. Um, you have no option actually for any crane attachments with the four unit sideboard bed, which is super sad and disappointing because I guess, I don't know. I wonder if the developers looked at it and were like, well, if we let her have both a four unit sideboard and also a crane on the same truck, she'll just be too powerful. But all of that aside, I would still happily run this thing as is uh, with the four unit sideboard. And we're actually going to load it up with some cargo and test it out while we're doing some of the other tests here on the summer testing grounds. And I kind of wanted to get creative with the cargo. So I added something that was a little bit, I don't know, almost outside the norm of what I would normally put in the bed of a truck like this. Normally for testing purposes, I would just throw like a big box or I would throw... I don't know, like long planks or something, but I was like, ah, I'll throw something a little bit out of the ordinary in here and just see what it's like, see what it's all about. Now, setting off, one of the first things you notice right off the bat is that this thing actually drives a little bit awkwardly on the road. Now, that's primarily due to the fact that it has articulated steering and the front wheels themselves don't even have any kind of steering geometry whatsoever. They don't actually turn. So it kind of puts you in this odd state of honestly having to drive like you constantly have a trailer, even though you don't technically have a trailer. And because of what I just said, I don't even want to think about towing a trailer with this thing. I know it would kind of be, I mean, you can do it. However, it's gonna be a little odd. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit outside the norm of what you're used to for sure. And if you really want to, you can put a high saddle on this thing. You can tow giant semi-trailers with it. But let me just be the first to warn you that if you do decide to do that and then you take yourself down some kind of super remote tight back road and then you find yourself in a spot where you literally can't work the truck back out of that road again, uh, let this be your warning, I guess. Which then brings me to my, I wouldn't even say next issue with the truck, but because it's not necessarily an issue per se, it's more like a, a, like something that I don't personally care for about the truck. And it's kind of being highlighted right now. And that is the fact that this articulation system can get uh, pretty much fully jammed up. And when I say fully jammed up, I mean, it can get into a situation where you legitimately cannot steer. Now, if you like to geek out over realism, you'll probably love that. You'll probably love the fact that this truck can get into situations where if you put it there, you very well might not be able to get back out again if you can't work out where you're going. So just keep that in mind that if you are planning to do some really remote driving with this thing or if it's going to be a primary truck it very well may end up getting you into a bind that you then cannot get yourself back out of so just keep that in mind if this is going to be a primary truck in really any fleet of yours so 
Now, the next thing I want to talk about is this thing's capability in the mud, because it's actually a lot better than you might have expected because think about it right it's got these massive enormous tires underneath it it's extremely heavy and it well it has trouble going up hills but that's not really super relevant to the mud what is super relevant to the mud though is the fact that you just honestly you just throw this thing in low plus turn the lockers on and nine times out of ten you can just you can just sit there and drive it. You can just sit there and drive it and let it go and it'll pretty much just sort everything out for you. So if you're not in an area where you have to worry about hills, you should be pretty much fine with this thing. That being said though, I do have a couple of gripes with it that I'll get to a little bit further down the road a little bit later on in the video because my gripes with this thing kind of, kind of all stem from the same place because they all stem from the same aspect of just overall dynamic issues with the platform. Now, what I mean by that is the approach angle is terrible, the breakover angle is terrible, and the departure angle is also terrible. Now, you might think, well, those are not all that important given the type of truck that it is or given the type of work you'll probably do with it. But honestly, I would argue that they are super important because any truck that you're going to be using for a wide variety of tasks, especially in this game, you're going to run into scenarios where approach angle is going to be relevant, breakover angle is going to be relevant, and so is departure. And the dips obstacle, which you'll see a little bit later in the video, or rather that's kind of where we're headed right now, um, that in particular will highlight what I'm talking about here because I really have to go back and highlight once again, this is not a bad truck. This is not a bad truck at all. It's not a bad truck whatsoever, to be honest. It's just, it has these extremely annoying flaws that put it in essentially a category that make it really, really good for some things and kind of awful for other things. However, I'll let y'all be your own judges of this because I'm gonna now let you enjoy my attempts to get through the dips obstacle in this thing, which did not go as planned. So can you spot the issues? I'll give you a hint. It's uh, it's a approach angle, departure angle, and breakover angle. And I tried again just to be sure, and I ran into the same problem. Literally ran into. And before someone goes off in the comments and says, well, you just don't know what you're doing. You just don't know how to drive it. You just don't, you're just bad. I would highly encourage you to try the exact same test in the exact same truck and report back to me with your findings. If you would be so kind as to do that for me, that would be lovely. So thank you. However, with all of that being said and done, I'm going to let y'all enjoy the bridge jump in this thing, which kind of had a hilarious ending to it. So hope y'all enjoyed that. But if y'all enjoyed the full test of this truck and shared some of my opinions or maybe did not share some of my opinions and thought I was entirely wrong and stupid and don't know what I'm talking about, then let me know in the comments down below. But that is where I'm going to end this one and I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.